Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. This is the ARC preview. I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm joined today by an expert guest, of course, Odds Checker's very own tipster, Andy Holding. Andy, it's a special episode today for a special, special race. How excited are you ahead of the weekend? Yeah, um, a podcast with a difference, isn't it? Uh, we get to talk about um, some different kind of races, French racing, of course, um, obviously with a, a huge um, UK uh, representation um so we you know we we know all that we know all those household names uh the french uh, horse is not so so much but done a bit of homework and um hopefully we'll be able to find a few winners for uh listeners of the podcast um on sunday predominantly fingers crossed well we're going to go through the card on sunday we're going to touch on one race uh tomorrow we're recording this at about quarter past 11 on friday morning so the markets for sunday just reforming after the final decks and and the draws are all confirmed as well. This is a special podcast. Normally, we just talk through the racing. We've got a couple of interviews coming up as well with some special guests. Uh, you'll hear from, for example, uh, Mikel Michel, the French jockey, who will be talking to us ahead of our art preview and another special guest at the end of the show as well. So do listen out for some other expert analysis, hopefully. Um, Andy, before we get into the racing, I mean, it's been pretty miserable where I live in, in London for the last couple of days. It feels like it hasn't stopped raining at all. And looking over at the weather forecast in Paris, it doesn't look too much better, especially on Saturday and overnight into into Sunday as well. Yeah, sp- spot on, um, uh, George. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine who studies the, the French racing um, like I do the English racing, um, he's told me that the course is expected to have at least 50 mil in the next 48 hours. So if that is correct, and even if they just get half of that, then the ground's going to be heavy by Sunday. I mean, it's already soft now. So if they're going to get mm. more rain on top of what they've got, um, it is going to be pretty testing. So I think the the dynamics of these races is going to be totally different to how we would have anticipated probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think the prices, which have pretty much been set in stone for the last week, we now can look towards a few of these uh, prices. They, they look the wrong price based on the going change. Um, so I think, yeah, it's um, it's quite exciting for me because I, I do like it when it goes like this because you can cherry pick the the, the ones where the, 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 the prices look completely wrong. Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll find a few of those. Uh, before we get into the racing, Andy, always the case at Longchamp when we look out for the draw and there's a big draw bias often, especially in the arc where we see certain horses drawn in certain stalls perform uh, much better than others. So can you outline for those people who maybe don't um, year on year follow this that closely i know a lot of people will know this and it's pretty elementary but for those who don't can you just talk us through the draw bias that long shot yeah it's right handed track they they come down from from the back straight uh into the full straight as it were and most years you need to be you know fairly close up um so a low draw does help i.e towards the inside on the rail those that are drawn in double figure draws pushed out on the on the outside obviously have to cover more ground they can't get in. Uh, they don't have. They don't have as much cover, and they can't switch off. I think that's probably what happened to Enable last year. Um, so it's certainly worth bearing in mind um, if you fancy something strongly that if it does get a, a double figure draw, you might want to sort of cut back on your stakes. Um, so I'm going to be looking to hopefully for water horses that are drawn in single figures, and particularly the Labo as well, the Sprint. I was doing a bit of research on that uh, race uh, this morning and only one horse has defied a double figure draw in recent times. There, there, there was there was another one, but that was when it was shift, shifted to Shanti. There's mm-hmm. a little bit of a red herring there. Uh, and the horse in question was moving time um, back in, I think it was something in around the 2012 mark. Um, and he did it on good ground. But on soft ground, you really want to be looking uh, at um, single figure draws, which... Could count against uh, Sueza, who's drawn 12 of the 14 runners. Um, mm. So, again, okay, worth bearing in mind. anti post favourite. We all know how good she is. But she's got heavy ground and she's got still 12 to contend with. And she's still 2-1. to one. I don't think her price, we'll get on to it in a, sec- in, in a second, but I don't think her price now represents her actual chance of winning. Um, mm. So that, that, that race is definitely worth looking at. Sneak preview there of something we'll be talking about fairly soon. Uh, we'll get into the racing now, but before we do, please do download the Odds Checker app. We'll be talking in this podcast, on this video, 
in terms of the best prices available with odds checker. As I say, we're recording this yeah, just past 11 o'clock on Friday morning. So these markets are, are reforming. Apologies for any of the prices are out of date. We're doing the best we can. But I can assure you that if you download the odds checker app, you'll be getting or well, you'll be able to see the best prices on offer at the time uh, of listening. And that is essential. Also, the best bookie offers, free bets, the best place terms, crucial as well. You'll be able to see which firms are offering extra places and of course Andy's tips every day uh, through, straight through to the app first place you can get hold of them before the prices start tumbling and the grids all go blue so do download the odds checker app now this is a Sunday preview but there is a great weekend of racing across the whole uh, weekend at Longchamp and we're going to quickly touch on one race on the Saturday the Prix de Cadran where Princess Zoe and Trushan are the, t- are the sorry nine to four joint favourites ahead of Stradivarius at 130. Scazino is 12 to one. Call the Wind 14 to one. Bubble Smart 16 to one. Uh, Emperor of the Sun 20s. Carl Stan 25s. 33 to one. Bar. And the, uh, at the top end of the market, a few horses. Well, certainly in the case of Trushan and Stradivarius, we've spoken about a lot on this podcast over the past year or so. Normally, Stradivarius is the one who's shorter in the market, but as you've been saying pretty consistently over the course of the last six months. Um, the, the market has reversed that now with Trushan, the shorter price. I think that's a count of the ground, isn't it, George? Um, yeah. I think everyone knows that Trushan wants soft ground. Um, he's been a withdrawal in his two big targets uh, this season. Um, we, as we all know, the rain came the day after he was withdrawn for the Gold Cup. Um, whether we'd have won that, I don't know, but certain conditions on the Friday would have given him every chance. Uh, and and then same happened um, on on his late, latest start um, at Goodwood and uh, uh, at uh, Doncaster in the Doncaster Cup when it dried out and it went good to firm and connection pulled him out there quite rightly as well. So he's basically just been um, ticking her over in his box, probably asking his trainer when when on earth I'm going to run. He hasn't run for 67 days and, and when he did last run he was very impressive. He's just a very very good horse while on soft ground as we saw mm. at Goodwood when he when he thrashed his field. The race has worked out really well. Um, I, th- I think even Nayef Road won the other day, didn't he, out of that race? I think he was down the field in fifth. He's, he's just plain and simply the best day around on soft ground at two miles in, in this country. Um, I think he's better than Stradivarius. He proved that when he beat him easily at Ascot last season. The only thing we don't know about Trushan is two and a half miles on soft ground or stroke mm. heavy ground if it is going to be that on Saturday. If he stays the extra four furlongs, then I think he'll probably win. Um, and I think he's about the right price. I think he's the right favourite because I think he's had a light campaign. He hasn't had as hot, many hard races as quite a few of these. He's going to come here fresh, so um, he's got le- le- less scars uh, than one or two of the others in this contest. I'd certainly pay a huge respect to Princess Zoe, who was run up in this race uh, last season after a very busy campaign. But I think her season, similar to Trushan, has been geared around a couple of big races, and the Cadran is definitely one of her, her main targets because two and a half miles on soft ground is absolutely ideal for her as she proved last season. Um, so, sorry, no, she won this race last year, didn't she? Also, mm. she was second before she won this race last year, big upon. Um, so I, I think those two, at sort of two to one each or two, are the right favourites. I don't fancy Stradivarius, not on this occasion, two and a half miles soft ground off the back of several, you know, hard races. I mean, yeah. He's won them comfortably, but look, you know, you don't run two and a half miles, with, two miles without having you know, using up petrol. Um, and I think this might be a bridge too far for him. But um, I'll be keeping my fingers crossed that Trushan proves that he is the best star out there. Trushan, nine to four, best price at the moment. That is with Skybet and William Hill, uh, the one for Andy in that 2.15, the Prix de, Cad- the Prix de Cadran uh, on 2.15 on Saturday. We'll move on now to the Sunday racing. We're just going to go through the card here. Um, there are... How many races are we going to go through? Is it six, I six. think, on the day? Yeah, six, six yeah. on the day. Yeah. S- starting with the uh, pre-Marcel Boussac, the opening race of the day, where Raclette is the 11-8 to favourite. These prices were 3 6 5 for the first out this morning. Um, Agatha is 3-1. to one. Uh, Fleur de Rie is 11-2. to 11-1 to one bar uh, in, I think there are nine runners here, Andy. Uh, over to you on this one. Um, yeah, Raclette, the top end of the market for Andre Fabre. Yeah, the one thing about a few of these um, two world contests over in France over the weekend um, that I, I'm a little bit uh, not up to speed with, of course, is the, is the French time figures. Mm. I, I've had a look at their form. I've looked at all their races, all the videos, get their run styles, what they're about, you know, what kind of ground they're like. So I've done all the homework as I would normally, but without knowing how fast they've run, 
I don't really know which one's the best on, on pure numbers. Um, so it's quite difficult to have an objective view without, without that kind of data. Um, and in comparison to the UK runs, UK and Ireland runs as well. So I'm a little bit more in the dark than I would be with analysing these races, but I've done my best. Of what yeah, I've seen so far, of, of yeah, of what I've, of what I've seen of the, these these fillies in this uh, pre Malso Boussac, I think Andre Farb holds a pretty uh, strong hand. He's got three, mm. uh, three of the front four or five in the market, of which Racolette's favourite. Now she's probably been the most impressive on the eye when she won last time out. She strode um, majestically clear 16 days ago when she won at Chanty. Um, she handled the soft ground that day, as she did on debut, so I don't think the ground's going to be too much of an inconvenience. And it's interesting that Maxon Guion, uh, stable jockeys, um, decided to ride her rather than uh, Flor Deris, who uh, dogged it out from the front last time out. I'd imagine Flor Deris will probably lead again. I'll try and probably make plenty of use of her. She's got the stall one berth, taking the field along at a good gallop. And if they do go good gallop, I do think the third string of Andre Farb's at Zelle certainly comes into the equation. She looks, to my eye anyway, a very strong stayer. Uh, she reminds me of this winner last year, of, of, this, of the winner of this race last year as well, who l- looked as the, a similar type, the, the grinder result out. I think she was a bit unlucky given how the race panned out here last time out beyond Fleur de Ries. With a couple of more bounds, I think she would have probably got up. Um, I think she wants a strongly run mile. So. Mm. If that is going to be the case, and they do go a reasonable gallop, because you've got a schooler in there as well, don't 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 forget George Boy's filly. That horse likes to go a good gallop. As I said, you've got Fleur de Ries as well. I won't want to be hanging around. Agartha as well, another horse trained by Joseph O'Brien, who's made the run in two or three times this season. I think there is going to be plenty of pace on here. I don't think this is going to be a normal French kind of race where they crawl. And those crawls haven't really suited Zelle. That's why I think she's got caught out uh, as favourites on the last two runs. But... Um, if it is genuine soft or heavy in places, that strongly run mile, I definitely play into her strengths. Or she Murphy's been booked. She's got a reasonable draw. I see Zelly around about the nine to one mark as being the value bet of the race. In fact, I think she's a bit slightly bigger than that, isn't she? She is, yeah. Uh, Eleven to one best price for three six five. Yeah, that, that's that's we haven't got too many prices coming through at the moment. But I think if you can get double figure quotes on her on on Sat on Sunday, that you won't you won't be too far away from her. A good solid each way bet there because I do think she'll pick up the pieces late. Zelly there, eleven to one, best price as it stands with three six five. The one for Andy and Oshin Murphy, hopefully on the day. Uh, on then to the second race on the day, it is the Prix de sorry the Prix Jean Luc Lagardère, where Ebra River is the four sorry nine to four favourite. Um, nine to four Ebra River favourite there. Ancient Rome eleven to four. Akakaba is the nine to two third favourite uh, with Angel Blue fifteen to two. Uh, Noble Truth, 10 to 1, 20 to 1 bar. Uh, Andy here. Ebro River, a horse we've spoken about a fair bit so far this season for Hugo Palmer, uh, topping the market here, just ahead of Andre Fabra's Ancient Rome. I think the, the prices were reversed before the decks as well. Yeah, um, I think uh, the dynamics of this race have changed because Stone Age doesn't run, um, which is mm. a bit of a shame. I think um, I don't know, Brian's... Colt would have been a would have, would have been a big fancy. I'm not sure what he's been withdrawn on account of. Maybe the ground. I don't really know. But he he would have been a big player. But there's no doubt about it that Ebro River sets the standard here for me. I think he should be favourite on form. Um, third in the uh, the National Stakes Group One is by far and away the best line of form anyway. Certainly better than uh, what the French have um, have to offer. Uh, and that's you know off the back of a, a victory the time before uh, in another group Group One. So he's proven at the very highest level. Um, I had my doubts actually whether seven furlongs would be ideal for him. He, he looked a bit of a sprinter to me in, in, in his formative years, but he's now stretching out pretty well to a mile. Uh, sorry, seven furlongs. Um, mm. And he's got a, a run star that which should be suited to French racing because he's got a good turn of foot. Um, I, I don't think he necessarily wants an end-to-end gallop over the trip. So, you know, given that he had to row his own boat last time out and he got picked off by strong stays at the trip, I, I think a more evenly run gallant might suit him here. Um, he hasn't got any problems with the ground. You know, he's by Galileo Gold. He wants soft ground, so that's that's fine for him. So I, I think on balance, if, if if the races haven't caught up with him, he, he's probably the one to be with. I'd certainly respect Ancient Rome. I watched all his races. He looks, he can win from the front. He's won off the pace. Um, he's a classy looking colt. Um, I just don't know how good he is because he hasn't been beating any UK horses I can put my finger on and say oh yeah that, that's the form line we need to um, um, look at strongly um, and, and he's very similar to Akakaba as well who 
has won her th- three races off the reel. She's looked fairly impressive. Obviously, you know, Philly's receiving the allowances. He's going to be a bit of a bit of a help towards her chances. And I certainly think you've got to factor in Angel Blue as well, with George, because the last time mm. we saw him in the vintage states, he beat um, the Coventry winner, uh, Boxer Shadow, um, quite comfortably. And, and that was when the ground came back in his favour. He's two runs on soft ground. He's looked very impressive. Either side of that, he's, he's been beaten on fast ground. But um, Rafe Beckett will be absolutely delighted with, with um, the rain that's fallen for him. And obviously with Frankie Buck, that's got to be seen as a positive. I don't really know as much about the the other three or four in in the race to sort of talk favourably of them. So I think Ebro River is the one to beat on form. I think um, if I was having a bet in the race, he he'd be the one I'd, I'd look at. But um, Angel Blue with the dead eight runners, he he's also tempting to perhaps put in some each way multiples as well. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't a bad look, uh, each way looked at that race on Saturday as well, um, with the three at the top of the market taking out Stradivarius too. So maybe that's one where you could yeah. get a bit of uh, each way value. But um, yeah, Angel Blue opened up at 7-1 to one with 3.65 about 10 minutes ago, already cut into 13-2. to two. But Mansion that's Bet, price, best yeah. price, Mansion Bet, best price at the moment, 15-2. to two. Hopefully that's still knocking around when people get hold of this. But Ebro River... The likely winner, <clears throat> according to Andy there, at nine to four, rightfully at the top end of the market. Um, on now to the big race of the Sunday. You know, it's a stellar car, but the arc is, of course, the biggest race. And before we get Andy's thoughts, I was able to catch up with jockey Mikel Michelle to get her thoughts on what looks like a fantastic race on Sunday. I'm delighted to be joined by Mikel Michelle now. And Mikel, for anyone of us uh, UK racing fans who haven't been uh, lucky enough to get to know your career so far, can you just tell us a bit about yourself and what you've done so far in your young career as a jockey? Um, it was a dream for me uh, to come kind of ride like this. Uh, I work hard for that, but um, I can't stop to say thank you so much to a fans uh, all over the world, the trainer and owner who support me like this. Am I right in saying that you've ridden in nine different countries so far? Uh, Italy, Sweden, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Germany, Ireland, Japan, the Mauritius and England. It, it's crazy. Uh, you know, when I was young, I said to my mum, mum, I just want to travel a lot and uh, I want to see many countries. And now I do that with my job so I can travel and ride. So it's just a dream for me and... To can win everywhere like this, it's uh, amazing. I said every time I want to become international jockey like uh, Detori or Sumiyu, who many trainers call them for said, please, can you ride there or there? And <laughs> it's magic. So I'm very happy. Now we're going to talk about your time in Japan in a second, but you made your debut over in Britain at the Sherga Cup. How, how did you find that experience? Um, it's really different, but uh, all experience is really important for me because uh, for, for me to become a jockey, a real good jockey, you have to learn a lot of. So these horses are different everywhere. In Japan, they are very strong and very um, uh, fast. They pull a lot of. But uh, in UK, the races um, uh, go more fast than in France, but horses look similar. So... It was good experience and what a chance to ride in Ascot. Now, I was told that um, before this interview, you had to do a Japanese lesson, um, which I think just shows how impressive uh, your short term spell in Japan was. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, I don't really chose to go in Japan. They really chose me. My first plan was to go in USA because it's more easy. You have just to speak English and it's not really easy. But for me, it was a little bit more easy. But Japan chose me and I fell completely in love to Japan when I go there. It's amazing country. They love so much horse racing. So now I have to speak Japanese. It's not really easy, but um, now it's my new goal and I can't wait to go back there. Can you can you say something in Japanese for us? Konnichiwa, minasan. It's uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Perfect, ideal. Um, are you going back out there soon? I hope. Um, I'm still waiting. Border will open. Uh, it's very long for me, but the life is like this. Now we have to do with the corona. Uh, so mm. when the border open directly, I take the first Straight plane. There. <laughs> 
hopefully that won't be too long to wait. Uh, we'll talk about the racing now, and obviously it's an incredible weekend's racing as ever at Longchamp with the ARC, um, especially the one that a lot of people look forward to on Sunday, but plenty of other good racing as well that we've already previewed on this podcast. Uh, on the day, the weather forecast looks looks pretty bad on Saturday and, and overnight on Sunday. Uh, what do we anticipate the ground is going to be come Sunday? The ground will be heavy, <laughs> for <laughs> sure, because the ground is um, already soft because we, we don't have really good um, summer time. So with the rain, this, the rain is coming. So yeah, for sure, the ground will, will be heavy. Um, I hope uh, races will, will be OK with that. But uh, it's like this. Um, the jockey's job is not uh, really easy every day. Uh, I prefer <laughs> to ride with the sun, but it's like this. It will be arc and we will uh, get uh, a beautiful winner for sure with the rain, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautiful winner. Well, I mean, as you know, um, Japanese racing fans are absolutely desperate to have an arc winner. And in Chronogenesis, they have uh, one of the top end of the market, I think fifth favorite at the moment, around 12 to 1. But fair to say, the weather and the rain probably isn't great for chronogenesis chances i think it's not a problem for her um sure the soft ground in france and in japan is not the same soft ground but she travels a lot uh she can ride she can run and win everywhere and on many different tracks um i spoke with christophe lemaire who know her and mm -hmm. he told me he think it's not a a problem for her but we will see the race is the race but i think it will not a problem for her and uh, she will run fantastically for sure who do you think is going to win the arc i love tanawa she loves the track she loves the soft ground uh, sumio know her perfectly uh, she won the last year in longchamp for me she will win i hope too for for sumio but uh, i hope she can fight with chronogenesis <laughs> <laughs> hopefully hopefully and and what other you know often you know us in the uk uh, we look at the arc and i think sometimes we see some of the french horses ignored you know we've seen some french winners in the arc recently and you know sot sass wildgeist and other horses on the card too so not just in the arc but over the weekend are there any french horses that you think that us uk racing fans should take note of um i think um we have uh, a nice and strong horse in France, but the UK horses are so strong every time. Mm. I think um, it will be a fantastic uh, fighting weekend. I wish a winner for everybody, but uh, we will <laughs> see who will be the best one and uh, with the soft ground too. Yeah, and what's the horse that you ride on on Sunday? I ride uh, one horse from uh, from France. He likes the sub one, and the last year we rode the same race, and I finished fourth. So I hope to make the same results or better result. Fingers crossed. And are you doing some work for France Gallop as well over the weekend? Yes, yes. What are you doing for them? Um, we make a new concept this year uh, with three um, three people. Uh, like me, I will uh, speak in uh, Twitter uh, in live for Japanese people because I will speak in Japanese. So, wow. Or I will try uh, <laughs> <laughs> to speak all the days, but um, we will um, show to the Japanese people who can't come in Longchamp uh, something like uh, the jockey's room, the parade ring, the horses on the stable, something like this for they feel they are in Longchamp. They can't come, so we will try to come by phone uh, to them. Okay, amazing. Well, imagine if Chronogenesis does win, it'll be some reaction, I think, in Japan and on social media. <laughs> Everybody will cry. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself included, I bet. Uh, best of luck for the weekend, both with your rides and for all of that as well with France Gallop. And have a great weekend. Thank you for talking to us, Mikael. Thank you so much, too. Have a good weekend, and we will see if uh, UK horses run uh, and win <laughs> all the races. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's the right conditions anyway. We like the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you so much. So, Andy, now the pre de l'Arc de Triomphe, the Arc 
is upon us and we have two joint favourites at the top end of the market in Tarnawa and Adeyar, both at 130. Hurricane Lane, 4-1. to one. Snowfall, 5-1. to one. Chronogenesis, 12-1. to one. Love, 22-1. to 25-1 to one bar. Plenty in there. I mean, this is a fascinating uh, arc. It feels like the new generation in terms of the arc this, this, this time around. Pretty open, some quality horses at the top end of the field. Uh, I don't envy you having to tell me where the value is because I think you can make a case for for so many of them, as is always the case uh, in the art. It's got a different feel to it this year, hasn't it? Um, yeah. It's, it's very top-heavy with um, UK and our Irish representatives. We haven't had that for a little while now, have we? We've had mm. the domination of you know John Gosling and Abel, and I've always I always liked this as a betting race because you often find that the home contingent, the French brigade, such as Walt Goist and Sotsas in, in, in the last two years, get kind of overlooked. Mm. And, and they, because they're trained by Andre Farb and, and you know the, the local contingent, they tend to just gear their whole seasons around the Arc de Triomphe, uh, and everything else is a bit of an afterthought. But there isn't that kind of French runner in it this year. The the only one I could see was um, uh, Rabihar, mm. uh, the horse that finished fifth in the race last year, uh, that, for, trained by uh, Jean-Paul Rouget. I, I actually do think that she would run. She'll run quite well at a price because. The way the race panned out last year, it didn't really suit her. She 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 stayed on quite eye catchingly late on, and she's just had the four runs this season and and come good last time out after after getting beat at a short price the time before. So I do think twenty to one or twenty in and around the twenty to one mark isn't a bad price at face value. But she's going to draw twenty five to one best price. Yeah, she's going to draw on store fifteen, which I, I would have probably looked at her if she'd been drawn say one to five, but store fifteen, mm. I, I'd probably let her go. Um, of the of the um, the big guns, if you like, um, Adiar has come out worst of the draw. Um, he's drawn his stall eleven. Will offer William Buick, Buick quite a few problems, I'd imagine. Um, trying to get in, trying to get some cover. He's going to have to forfeit some ground at some stage in the race. I mean, his victory in the King George was sensational, given how keen he was in the early part of the race, and, and to say off Mishriff. In the way, in the, in the manner that he did, we've seen what Mishriff has done subsequently. It was, was, it was in the manner of a, a top class uh, Derby winner. I think he's one of the best we've seen so far. And Hurricane Lane has obviously advertised the form. Um, he's been trained specifically for the race. So the, the pause that refreshes is, is he's going to be um, he's going to be a good thing, I think, come Sunday. Um, it's just whether he handles the heavy ground. I mean, he's won on soft ground as a two year old. He, he handled it well enough at Lingfield, but. His best form is just on good ground or good to soft ground. There's no, there's no denying that. Um, you can sugarcoat it whichever way you want. I think in an ideal world, Charlie Appleby would want, you know, good to soft ground if he had to choose it. So the draw and the ground are the two things that slightly dissuade me from Adiar on this occasion at the price. Mm. I do think Tarnara is the right favourite under the conditions. She's drawn to trap three. She's also won at Longsham as well. We, we, we needn't forget that because when she won here on the twice. card last year, yeah, she's won twice, but she won on this card last year on heavy ground. Mm. She came from a long way back to win as well. It was against the bias. I mean, a, 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 a irresistible run down the tra- middle of the track was quite something to get up in the closing stage. And, and she's only had the two runs, a, 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 almost like a French style uh, campaign by Dermot Weld, just giving her the one run first time out to blow away the cobwebs. Got beat in a bit of a sprint finish in the champ- Irish Champion Stakes, but got beat by a very good horse, as we know, in St. Mark's Basilica. That would have put her absolutely cherry ripe. Uh, Sumion obviously lo- knows Longchamp like the back of his hand. Um, and I, I, I think that's, that horse is the right favourite, Tarnawa. Heavy ground's not a problem. Mile and a half's not a problem. Light campaign, good draw. It's hard to see her not going very close. Um, if, you, if you gave me a free tenner on the front two of the market, I think, she would be the one out of the two. But I think the bet, the prices, and I'm hoping we can get somewhere in and around the five to one mark for, for, for Hurricane Lane, is, is definitely uh, the, the St. Ledger winner because he's already proven that he stays really well when he beat a very good field um, at Longchamp two starts ago. Mm. Um, I mean, he was devastating that day, beating Mediterranean and Wordsworth and, and Al Kiar, uh, Alan Carr. Uh, and he, he, you know, he he, uh, he couldn't have he couldn't have won in any more easier fashion. To be honest, I think he was geared down later on. He obviously, gone on to win the St. Ledger in even easier fashion. He stays really well, which I think is what you're going to need here on Sunday. Um, but he's got a bit of everything. He's got a good tactical speed. He's got 
four months off ground. He's won at the track. We know he gets beyond it, which is not a bad thing, and he's got a he's got a great draw. So I I've got this between Tanawa and, and Hurricane Lane. But as a betting man that looks at value and what is the bet in the race, the price is. I'd rather be going Hurricane Lane each way at five to one than I would win only. Yeah. Because um, I can't see Hurricane Lane not being in the first three. I, I think he, he's he's almost certain to run his race. Hurricane Lane four to one. I'm afraid it's the best you're getting at the moment, Andy. That may change. Oh, right, okay. But four, four to one, pretty much across the board. Um, no mention for Snowfall yet, who of course has been at times devastating uh, this season. Oaks winner by 16 lengths. But last time we saw her, uh, she was beaten here by Tayona uh, after being sent off at five on uh, a few weeks ago. Um, do you think Snowfall at five to one could bounce back? Yeah, I mean, you never know what kind of levels she was at 21 days ago. Let's face it, it was only a trial, you know, the Verme. But um, she didn't show that brilliance that she'd shown previously at York or obviously in the, in the Oaks. Uh, the Oaks has run on soft ground, so that's not too much of an issue for her. Um, you'd just like her coming in here with a little bit more of a, uh, of a, of a better display than she showed last time. I don't, I don't think that form's good enough uh, to, 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 to see a winner not to triumph. And it's a stellar art to triumph as well. Don't forget she's got to take on the Colts as well. First time that she's she's yet she's got to do that. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be more inclined to back Hurricane Lane in a, in and around a similar price than I would Snowfall. Yeah, so Hurricane Lane just a bit shorter. Snowfall five to one. Hurricane Lane four to one. Uh, before we move on, any any bigger prices? You know, you mentioned uh, Rabia there for for the French contingent to twenty five to one. Any others of big prices you could see crashing yeah. the party? I, I always think when with conditions like this. It's kind of tailor made for something to come in and, and spoil the party at the top. Yeah, of them. yeah. I think if we if we were going to get uh, a bit of a Johnny Cun late, lately, as it were, I, I think I think Alan Kerr strikes me as being a horse who could easily poke the frame. Um, he was obviously got a bit to find, with, well, more than a bit to find with um, Hurricane Lane on. He's, he's run at Longchamp uh, here early on in the season, but if it is going to be bottomless and really really heavy, then you know we know that he's handled it, and of course he beat the Derby winner didn't he, early on in the season at Adiar, so. If you're mm. looking at, you know, he's, he's he's thirty times the price, thirty-three to one, than, than Adios three to one. Um, I don't think the ground will be fa- favourable for the Japanese horse, uh, Chronogenesis, which is a bit of a shame because they, they've obviously gone close to winning this. Off Evra was an unlucky loser a few mm. years back with Chris, in, in the hands of Christoph Sumin. Of course, Deep Impact was it was a gamble that went astray um, in the early part of the decade. So uh, they're, they're still desperate to win it, the Japanese, but I think um, they might have to wait another year. And, and of course, the draw in store 14 is not ideal. So maybe Alan Kerr at a big price for those. That if, if you're sniffing around for like three or four places, if some firms go four or five mm. places on Sunday, trying to get your business. Because um, I, I could see him running on into the first four or five just because the conditions are in his favour. But I, I don't see him beating or turning the form around Hogan Lane. Alan Kerr, 33 to 1 with William Hill and Unibet if you do want to go that way. And I think Aidan O'Brien might be at the door, having heard you, what you just said there about Snowfall. Uh, <laughs> can I, can I yeah. give you a piece of his mind? <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah. It'll make, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll make a change from the normal um, <laughs> the, the normal Amazon parcel I have to sign for. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, on then to the Prix de l'Opera, uh, the next race after the, 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 the arc, it is at the 350, the third last race on the cards. And we have got... Uh, Odera is the 130 favourite ahead of uh, Sibley of Spain at six to one. Palmas is eight to one. Grand Glory seventeen to two. Thundering Knights nine to one. Uh, Joan of Arc ten to one. Rougier fourteen to one uh, with Bergerita as well sixteen to one. Bar Andy, uh, how do you see this one? Um, well, I think Odera on balance is, is you, you know you'd, you'd say that she's probably a worthy favourite. She was third in this race last year. She's been knocking at the door. In, in Group One so far this season, um, and she's got soft ground, which will you know no doubt be in her favour. Um, a lot of these are very tightly knit, George. I think these fillies are there's not much of a muchness. You know, it's hard to split her with thundering knights they've met before. There's only been sort of necks and heads either way. Um, I do think Grand Glory's overpriced. She might put herself in a position where she finds it hard to come from too far back because there's quite a big field here, isn't it? I'm just looking how many 15 runners. She's normally held up towards the, the back of the field and, you know, passing as many runners as this might be a bit too far. I think she ran in this race last year and a game was too far back in the big field. I think she finished fifth or sixth in the end, running on a long, from a long, long way back. I think she actually turned into the straight last. But if Frankie can get 
grand glory into a what I would consider a reasonable striking position. She's definitely got the turn of foot and, and the stamina to, to to make her presence felt later on. She beat Odora last time out, fair and square at Deauville in the Jean Romanet, um, which I think is one of the most preeminent trials for this race. And she's a big, strong mare as well. If you look at Grand Glory, I've watched her a few few years now. When I did a little bit of French form a couple of years ago for Odds Checkers, she was a horse that was um, constantly, um, um, you know, com- coming to the fore in and around that period. Um, and like I say, she's got plenty of experience of running in these French races at Longchamp. So at eight to one, um, I would probably be half half inclined to to put her up. But I, this is probably my less strongest view of the whole meeting because. Like I said, mm. I think these a lot of these fillers you can chuck the balls up in the air and they come down differently every time. Depends on the draw on the ground, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be overly dogmatic here. Tentative selection for Grand Glory. Yeah. You know, if you if you've just had a winner in the arc and you, and you suddenly this comes up, think back to uh, to what Andy <laughs> said here. It's a small half a point on Grand Glory, but a but a, yeah. a difficult trappy race. Uh, we'll move on then to a race where you already know you've got uh, an opinion on because you you teased it early on. Uh, on to the Pre de la Bay, where Suesa is the nine to four favourite. I have a feeling you will be looking to take on that favourite based on what you said earlier. Uh, Glass Slippers, nine to two. Winter Power, five to one. Bernoy, eight to one. Romantic Proposal, 17 to two. Urban Beat, 16 to one. 25 to one bar. Andy, and you mentioned at the top end, but you think this is a case of maybe a bit of an out of date price for Suesa? Um, yeah, um, obviously. Like a lot of punters, she went into everyone's notebook as the most likely candidate for the pre de la off that back of that York run. Um, I actually didn't fancy that day on account of the draw more than anything else. I wasn't convinced that a fast five furlongs on fastest ground, uh, being drawn towards the stand side, she, she wouldn't get into the race. And to be, to be fair, I thought that was about as good as she could have done, a, a strong finish in eye catching fourth. Uh, her victory at the time before Goodwood certainly suggested that with a little bit of ease in the ground over that trip when they go good gallop, she, she's probably one of the best around, if not the best. But she's gone and dropped back to all 12, um, which definitely puts her at a dis- disadvantage. Certainly on, on the record books, you know, you, you, most of the time you need to be draw single figures, lowish towards the far side fence. Woody do won it last year, he was drawn stall three. Even when Batash won it a few years back, he was drawn stall two. Um, so it's definitely going to be a race I'm going to be looking at looking for some value to be had away from Suesa. If she wins from store 12, fair enough. But at two to one, I'm more than prepared to let her go at that price. So who are we going to take her on with? Um, well, I do think Glass Slippers has got to come into the argument. Um, you know, she's won this race before. She was just beaten last year by the, the aforementioned Woody, but she had a terrible draw last season. Not as though this season she's been handing her a, a gilt edge opportunity in store number nine. That's still tough enough, but it's certainly better than um, Suesa, Romantic Proposal, and of course, uh, Bernoy as well, the other French uh, raider. They're all drawn 14, 13, and 12, respectively. You couldn't make it up, could you? Three of the front mm. point market are all drawn right out in the wing. So she's actually four stalls better off than those three. So on that basis, she's got to have some kind of um, nudge in her favour. You know, she's been trained specifically for the race. She just had the two runs. She needed it first time out. She ran really well at the Cura the last day behind Romantic Proposal and just dive-bombed her late on. But the ground is very much in her favour. We, we, you know, Romantic Proposal wants good ground. She's now going to have to run on heavy from stall 13. And Glass Slippers like soft ground and she's got stall nine. So I'd fancy Glass Slippers, slippers under these conditions, given the draw, to turn the form around, plain and simply. Um the only other one I would throw into the mix, and I'm not sure whether it's going. It's, it's definitely running. It's been jocked up to run because Ronan Whelan's been booked to ride, but the prices mm. haven't. The prices haven't reacted to it yet. But if it does run, I do think a case of you, trained by Adam McGuinness, is a massive. Would be a massive player now because I don't know whether he's running up, whether he's a withdrawal, and um, and, and um, that hasn't come to press yet. But he's run behind glass slippers and. Um, romantic proposal last time at the core was phenomenal. He was drawn in stall two. The pace was all at the stand side rail. He was the only one that was drawn low to get anywhere near him. And he split the front two in the market that day. Uh, and he loves soft ground. The softer, the better for him. Mm. I don't, I don't get... think he runs for no, just now. I mean, you yeah, are right. He's dropped up, but he's not in the market. So I, I assume he's come out this morning. 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what the, the, the story is with him because I, I thought he was going to be a non-runner even before I started this preview. But then then I, I, I've refreshed to see the actual decks come through and he's still in there and Roman Wheeling's actually on him. Mm. And, and he was already out the betting prior, prior to when I was looking at the race. I was thinking, well, what, what's going on here? So, like I say, just a little caveat out there. If he does run, yeah. I would definitely be having a few good on a case of you. Uh, I should hate not to mention it, just in case he turns yeah, around and a runner. Up. Uh, but as yeah. it stands at the moment, at the prices, again, another solid each way pick here in, in the shape of uh, glass slippers at, what was it, nine, nine, five, nine five, to two. Nine to two. Nine to two, best price. That's with 365. Glass slippers, the one for Andy in the Prix de la Bay. On to the last race of the day. It is the Prix de la Ferrette, and we have Space Blues at the top end of the market. Two to one favourite, Space Blues. Kinross, 13 to two. Uh, Sagamira, seven to one. De Hale, nine to one. Pearls Galore, 10 to one. Speak of the Devil, 14 to one. And then 18 to one, bar the others, Andy. Give us a winner in the last. I'll try. Um, Space Blues, yeah, as we all know, he's probably the, one of the best seven furlong horses in the world, isn't he? He's, he's very much a specialist at this trip. Um, he needed the run first time at Goodwood. It was good last time at York. Back to his best. Just heavy ground, isn't it? It's going to be heavy ground on Sunday. That's the only thing he's got no real solid form on. He's won on easier ground, but nothing as bad as what he's likely to encounter over the weekend. Still 10 as well. He's not ideal. Nine to four. I could Again, another one. I could just take it or leave it at the prices, to be honest, George. Mm. Do Hale would have been high up on my shortlist. But for the draw, he's gone in bag store 14, which is absolutely horrendous. Um, I mean, he, I thought he ran really well last time. out. He, he finished an eye-catching second, doing all his best work at the end uh, behind uh, Garros. He definitely wants further than six furlongs nowadays. That was almost like, just like a little prep for this race. And I, I just don't think he's the kind of horse who's been suited to how a lot of fr- French races have, have been working out. I actually don't. I think he's almost better off coming over to our country and um, and running in these strongly run seven furlongs because uh, they tend not to be run to suit. He would have been my automatic choice, but for the draw, do hail. Um, so what I'm going to go with is New York. Uh, Jessica Harrington has been, um, you know, foreign in winners left, right and centre. It's been quite quite the September uh, for, for her. And um, she shows no signs of stopping at the moment. But Niord is very much a horse who likes to get his toe in. Um, every time that he's had soft or heavy ground, and a strongly run race. He's, he's always shown up really prominently on our figures. His best run of the season when he was third behind Sacred um, two runs ago. And that run, a repeat of that run, would certainly give him a chance. And given that that ground that day was good ground, and, and I think he's going to be even better on soft ground, I, I could see him being the, the joker in the pack here. Uh, he's got a decent draw. Like I said, the faster they go, the better. And because he stays a mile, he'll be doing all his best work at the end. So... I'd be definitely looking to put Njord in some of my combination bets come Sunday. Njord, 18 to 1 best price as it stands with Sport Nation, the one for Andy in the lucky last. Uh, thank you very much to Andy for giving us your thoughts both on the one race on the Saturday and throughout the card on Sunday. Hopefully some winners in there, definitely some value. I have no doubt about that. Uh, on now to our final interview and it is a man who's going to be out there who I'm sure many of us have seen videos of him on course before this weekend uh, it is Stephen Power aka the racing blogger blogger how are you doing mate how is it all out there very well mate um, at the moment I'm not sure if you can see these clouds are starting to build and we're just hoping that the heavens don't open otherwise it's going to become monsoon season here but the vibe's good we've been in Shanty for the week we've been with Alan the Roy Dupree on the gallops one of the Hall of Fame trainers, not just in France, but across the globe. The man's won over 300 group races. And I'm buzzing for what looks an absolutely sensational arc to triumph on paper. It absolutely does. I mean, you're being followed around by by one of Odds Checker's very own for the, for, for the next couple of days, uh, Liam Sullivan. Uh, what can you tell us? Like, what, what have you got planned for this, uh, I guess, kind of bit of a fly on the wall documentary about your weekend in, in France? So we're kind of going to, I don't want to give too much away because I want everyone at home to really enjoy this. But uh, I want the viewer to feel like they're in my shoes. I wasn't born into racing. don't come from a racing background. Um, I've kind of forced my own way in and I've done a lot of things that a lot of people, quite frankly, can't believe. And uh, I'm going to let them know just how simple it's actually been to do it. Hard work. So uh, we're also going to bring them (laughs) behind the scenes in France, in in Chanty, in Paris. Liam's going to be following me around Longchamp. He's actually getting a bit of this right now as we speak. Um, so we're going to make it exciting. I think people are really going to enjoy this. Put your feet up, have a cheeseburger, have a cup of Coke and just kick back and chill and enjoy the series. 
he's burger sounds great uh yeah. i mean yeah i've got to say to, to viewers and, and listeners now if you want to see this when it eventually does come out in a couple of weeks time do subscribe to the odds checker youtube page that's the first place you're going to find it when it does come out um but let's talk about the racing and before we talk about the weekend you know you your relationship with french racing for anyone who's followed you after, after the over the last couple of years has been a bit of a love affair i mean how did that come around and how much do you now love the sport over the other side of the channel i started coming to racing in france on my own i think like probably a lot of people do uh, my own friends are all football fans, so they're not really into horse racing. So I ventured over on my own to uh, Saint Clou, Autoy, Longchamp and Chanty. And I just fell in love with the beauty of the Parisian racetracks. You know, you've got these race courses in Paris. You've got some of the best food in the world. Everyone who knows me knows that if you want to get on my good side, buy me good coffee, <laughs> feed me good steak. And France fits the bill for that. So um, I was also very intrigued by Alain de Roy Dupree and Andre Fab as a young man getting into racing. I watched them on the TV back home and during the 90s and 2000s, Andre was the absolute king. He had some of the greatest horses around. So getting to see them and then approaching them and getting these interviews and scoops and making friends with the best jockeys out here, going to the best studs. It's been a dream come true, really. And uh, my relationship over here with a lot of the people in France is fantastic and they respect what I do. They respect the, um, the way I promote their racing, their breeding. And the brilliant prize money that's on offer here because it is sensational and it puts England to shame. Yeah, I think uh, going to Paris, drinking nice coffee, eating nice steaks, watching racing. I think you're living not just your dream blogger, but a lot of other people's as well. Uh, this weekend Absolutely. promises to be an incredible iteration of the arc and the whole weekend you know it's often overlooked just how good the racing is both on saturday and sunday as well we've, we've gone through the card on sunday with andy holding before talking to you <clears throat> but i want to ask you what do you make of the arc especially you know we, the, the weather forecast is not good it looks like it's going to be a bit of a bog we've got the draw um finalized as well now who are you looking at as being the value in the arc you know it's a really hard question to answer i've had a thousand dms on insta i've had ten thousand on twitter <laughs> and i won't be <laughs> I won't be having a bet until we know what the ground is. As a punter, there's two things you need to back. Number one is value. And number two, don't back the wrong horses on the wrong ground. So I'll be waiting to the last minute. Um, if this rain does materialize and the 40 mils does come down, it's going to be monsoon ground. And um, look, we know Hurricane Lane stays well past the mile four. He's been well backed in recent days. There's no way Charlie Appleby would run this horse and risk him if he hadn't recovered from the St. Ledger. He's obviously got a strong constitution. If it does rain, he's going to be at the top of my list. Adiar won't go on heavy ground. I'm convinced of that. He's a good, soft, good ground horse. Um, Snowfall, I can't have after the run in the Verme. I mm. don't make excuses for horses. I'm not very forgiving as a punter. She got beat. She shouldn't have got beat. There were no excuses. She's off the list for me. It would probably be, it would probably be um, Hurricane Lane if it runs. I'm hoping we get some rain today because I'm very, very strong on Valia in the pre royal Lou for Alain de Roy. She's around the 9-4, to 2-1 to one mark, and if it does rain, I'll be ploughing in. Nice, a couple there. Hurricane Lane, also the one for Andy in the arc at 4-1, to one. so a bit of a handshake yep. there between Andy and Blogger. Wonderful ever see a real handshake between the two great men, hopefully one day. Um, what will the day look like for you on Sunday? You know, we know you'll be on course. We, we know you'll probably... Yep. Um, be, be sending out a couple of your selfie videos as well. But how does the day look from, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed? It's, it's going to be relentless. Uh, anyone who thinks I'm over here just breezing around, chilling out is absolutely off their <laughs> rocker. I'll be out of bed at 7am. I've got to be on track at half nine to film with uh, Claude Calanta, who, who's a big star out here for one of their jungle shows. Also the jockey, uh, Michelle Mikel. Uh, we'll be doing our own threads with France Gallo throughout the day. I'll be getting all my creative juices dripping like a hot burger. I'm absolutely pumped up for this. Um, I want to be in the right place at the right time. I want to be interviewing the right people. And I want to be capturing the moment for all the people who aren't here to let them know what it feels like to be at the arc through my eyes. And uh, to do that, you've got to be on the ball. But uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hard work. But uh, I really get a huge adrenaline kick out of creating world-class content. I was meant to be there with you this weekend, but sadly life got in the way and I'm very sad about it because I was there a few years ago to see Golden Horn uh, upset yep. Trev's party. It was one of the greatest days sport I've ever seen. So just finally, for Great anybody point. listening or watching who hasn't been before, who's always been tempted yep. but never taken the plunge, what would you say to them? Um, if you've ne Especially if you've never been to Paris, what a place to come. 
at one of the most iconic race courses in the world. It is absolutely incredible. You've got the best European runners. You've got the best runners from outside of Europe. The Japanese are here. This is a mixture. It's basically the best kebab you can get. You've got the three-year-olds <laughs> with the four- and five-year-olds. It's, it's the Olympics all rolled into one race. True test of stamina, speed and class. The Arc de Triomphe, just look at the roll of honours. It's the best race on the globe. Get to the Arc next year. It's going to be sensational. There's a Guinness tent. There's everything you could want. There's crepes a lot. You'll have a splendid time. If you don't, tell me why not, and we'll have a chat. And final, most important question, where are you going for dinner tonight? Good question. I'm t- staying in the hotel, Somalia. It's a five-star hotel, so I'm hoping the food might be classy there. If it is good, I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> but there, is a, there is a restaurant here called Bistro Paul Bear. Um, I might try and relocate that place. It was pretty epic last time. Nice. There you go. A couple of racing tips, a couple of restaurant tips as well from Blogger. Thank you very much to him for taking the time to talk to us. At the end of this preview, do subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel where you can get this exclusive content that we're filming with the racing blogger over in Paris over the weekend. Do subscribe to our podcast as well for all of our previews coming up too. Do download the Odds Checker app for the best prices, bookie offers, free bets and the best tips in the game as well. Uh, Crucially, enjoy the racing and thank you very much to all three of our guests for talking to us today.